Awesome. That brings our second workshop to a close. Lori and Rachel, thank you again so much for sharing your expertise. Um, yes, your presentation really underscored how meaningful the funding allocated through the appro appropriations bills can be. But it's critical that these dollars reach the communities that need them most and the organizations that are on the ground doing the work. Many of these funding opportunities come through competitive grant programs which require organizations to submit applications to be eligible to potentially be awarded funding. To help share some of the best practices and how to navigate the ap application process, we're very lucky to be joined by Amanda Eanes, Chief of Staff and Senior Advisor at HRSA's Maternal and Child Health Bureau, and James Willey, Deputy Division Director of Independent Review in HRSA's Office of Federal Assistant Management. Amanda and James will be sharing a brief presentation about the process of applying for competitive federal grants. Then we will open up to the floor for questions once again. Thank you, Amanda and James, for being here. Hello, good afternoon. How are you? Nice to see you all. Thank you so much to Congresswomen Underwood and Adams and the whole caucus for hosting this summit and inviting us here today. It's been a privilege to attend today. My name's Amanda Innes, and I have the lucky privilege of being the uh, Chief of Staff in the Maternal and Child Health Bureau in the Health Resources and Services Administration, which is in the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, so thank you. Uh, both my colleague, Mr. Willie, and I are thrilled to be here today to recognize your tremendous maternal health work, and it's our goal that you leave today's workshop with more knowledge of the um, not-so-simple uh, federal grant application process, and we hope that you leave with some helpful tips um, that you can use. Next slide. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, um, some tips for developing a successful application and applying for federal funds, um, information about how to apply, and we'll have a little bit of time for a Q&A at the end, and we're happy to talk to you afterwards. Next slide. So the Maternal and Child Health Bureau is the only federal agency solely dedicated to maternal and child health. We're very proud. Um, we strengthen public health systems to meet the needs of America's mothers, children, and their families. We reach more than 58 million pregnant people, infants, and children, including children with special health care needs. We provide services to make sure all moms, babies, children, and youth are physically and mentally healthy. We spur national guidelines for women's and children's checkups. We train the health workforce to meet the specific needs of families, and we're very proud to run the National Maternal Mental Health Hotline, and that's 1-833-TLC-MAMA. Next slide. So in fiscal year 2023, Congress appropriated our agency $1.17 billion to make a difference for families across the country. This included funding for a range of wonderful maternal health efforts, including funding to support state systems, maternal health innovation projects across the country, bolster the maternal health workforce, and improve quality of care. And most, most importantly for me, provo provide funding for direct services to families through a number of really wonderful programs. Community-based organizations are eligible applicants to a number of these funding opportunities. And, and when they're not eligible applicants for direct funding, community-based organizations make essential partners to state agencies, universities, and other applicants. One of our programs that directly funds community-based organizations is the Healthy Start program. In fiscal year 2023, Congress appropriated $145 million to reduce disparities in maternal and infant health outcomes by supporting community-driven perinatal services in 101 communities across the nation. Those programs were in 35 states. We know that CBOs do fantastic work with these funds, and we encourage you to stay tuned in for this funding opportunity. This program pending appropriations in fiscal year 2024 will compete again. Next slide. So at the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, as well as across HRSA and HHS, we've been working really hard to reach a range of partners to carry out these valuable maternal health efforts. 
These partners include community-based organizations, and we're engaging in a range of technical assistance and outreach efforts to ensure more organizations know about the availability of federal funding for this work and how to apply. We know that CBOs are critical partners in addressing the maternal health crisis. We hope that you'll visit our website to find our funding opportunities, get links to technical support for applying, and to view a webinar of some of what we're covering today as well as other information. We'd like to note that nearly all of the fiscal year 2023 funding opportunities are nearly completed, but we are working rapidly on fiscal year 2024 funding opportunities in case funds are appropriated, and we expect to start releasing those funding opportunities in the coming months. Our Bureau posts our funding opportunities on our website. That's hrsa.mchb.gov. We have a funding tab with a drop down for open opportunities and upcoming opportunities. We hope that you'll come learn about our work. Next slide. Another way to stay aware of current opportunities is to subscribe to our newsletter, Partners in Progress. It provides information about our bureau, our work, our funding opportunities, and by subscribing, you'll get real-time notice of open funding opportunities. Next slide. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about how to approach applying to a HRSA NOFO. And for those of you who are new to that term, NOFO stands for Notice of Funding Opportunity. Next slide. So when writing a federal funding ap application, we recommend you approach it in four stages. The first being to do the research, the second being to recruit a team, the third is to respond to the guidance, and the fourth is to review and revise. Next slide. In this first stage, we encourage you to start early, well before funding opportunities are posted. We encourage you to learn about existing programs that we fund, looking at what the purpose of those programs are, what the need for those programs are, looking at previous competitions and previous NOFOs if they're available. This is a great way to get started and get a head start. When an opportunity is posted, it can be helpful to focus on key information relevant to your organization, like what's the need of the program, is your organization eligible to apply, and given the application or funding requirements, does your organization have the personnel to apply? We encourage you to evaluate the time and cost benefit of applying. Next slide. We encourage you to recruit a team. Once you've decided to apply, you can consider whether you'll partner with others inside and outside of your organization. And we know that these partnerships can be extremely helpful when it comes to application writing. In your internal team, it's important to decide who can draft the ap application, who can review and give feedback. We encourage you to talk with your colleagues, your partners, others who do this work, and choose a team member who can develop a strong budget. If you decide to partner in networks outside of your organization, it's helpful to determine the roles and the participation levels of each of the partners well in advance, and obtain written commitments or MOUs. Next slide. And then the key is to respond to the guidance. In responding to it, focus on the project activities, describe the gaps in current services that your project can fill, respond to all criteria and requirements. Don't forget any of those requirements. Don't assume the reviewers know your organization. Tell us what you do and why you're right for this opportunity. Our reviewers are going to be a panel of experts, but they may not know your organization well, and this is a great opportunity to highlight your work. We encourage you to use current data sources and avoid jargon to strengthen your application. Next slide. In writing a strong application, in terms of the goals and objectives, we encourage you to define them really clearly because they're the center of your proposal. Be really clear about the need for your program as well as your organization's track record in fulfilling that need. Show that you're right for this award. In the response and impact, we encourage you to show how you plan to achieve the program's purpose. Include supporting data that shows your, your uh, organization's accomplishments. 
under resources and capabilities, we encourage you to elaborate on your organization's knowledge, staffing, and fiscal stability. Explain how these ensure you can carry out your proposal and meet the goals of the program. And then for the budget, we encourage you to propose a realistic plan that matches your goals and objectives, ensures that you can carry out the work, and include a narrative that justifies those costs. Next slide. And then finally, review and revise. As you and your networks and experts that you work with review and revise the application, ask yourself these questions. Does the application show that you have the technical expertise, the personnel, and the financial capacity to be successful in the program? Are stakeholders of your organization supportive? Is your organization prepared to execute the award successfully? And have you fulfilled all of the requirements in the NOFO? Next slide. And I'd like to introduce my colleague. Good afternoon. I will uh, try and keep you entertained so you don't, I know we're the last, right before we go, or wrap it up. Um, so uh, starting with this one, just going over, my name is James Willey. I'm in the Division of Independent Review at HRSA. Um, and I'm just going to go through parts of the NOFO, um, a little more of that, and then get into some of the, uh, what it takes in terms of applying for federal funding, and then also how to become a reviewer for HRSA. Um, so next slide, please. Um, in FY 2023, uh, the Maternal and Child Health Bureau at HRSA issued 25 uh, NOFOs that eight this year. Um, and we, look, we, in terms of going back through them, you're definitely able to access them. Um, either on, on two different places, and I'll show you where the, you, can, you can see those. But that's an opportunity also just to get more information and to find out what has been funded or what they were asking for in the past. All of our NOFOs um, have key information in the first few pages. One of the things I just want to make sure people know and point out is that this is the first page of the NOFO. They're all going to look very similar to this, mostly across the federal government. will be looking similar to this, but on the first page, it has everything from the opportunity number to the title of it but it will also give you the due date and it will give you the contact information if you have any questions um, or staff contact there. Right after that, the first page is the executive summary. And in the executive summary, it's gonna give you that high level of what the purpose of the funding is for, but then we'll get into how many awards we anticipate making, how much money is available, what are the, the award amounts going to be, and what are we gonna be, what are we looking at in terms of the length of the project um, or the performance period. The other part that is really important and I want people to really focus on is the eligibility. Who's eligible to apply? And those are times, things that range. Sometimes we make grants for states and governments. And if you're not a state or government, then you just know this is not for you. You don't need to read any further. Sometimes they're for higher ed institutions. And again, if you're not a higher ed institution, don't bother yourself with this particular NOFA. But most of our applications are open to nonprofits and community-based agencies. And you can definitely just look through it, check out the eligibility, make sure it's appropriate for you. Um, and if it is, right after our, the executive summary and every NOFO, we have a technical assistance call. And those are calls where we have, we set up with our staff to go through and clarify any issues in the NOFO that people might have. You can ask questions, you can just listen in. It doesn't mean you're committing to apply. It's just simply a chance for us to make sure that if there are, if there are issues out there, we can hear those and address those as soon as possible. Next slide, please. These are the, just the sections of, a, of our, a NOFA that we have. And looking through them, there are three that we start just to really kind of highlight areas that we think are important and we want to make sure people are aware of. Starting with the eligibility, again, it'll go more in depth um, than just in the executive summary. And that's when you can find out, is it appropriate for me? Is this, is this talking about something that they want to do a na nationwide effort on and I'm only a regional player? Whatever it is, but you, it lets you know right up front if you are eligible or not. The other part is getting into the application and the submission information. And some of those pieces are, are looking through it and making sure that one, you, have a, you can make sure you can do a complete application. What they're asking for, what the requirements are, whether you need uh, letters of support, whether you need memorandum of understanding, all those other aspects to be able to know this is what a complete application is and what I need to do to get there. Um, as well as the due date. Is it going to be most of our applications? We try and make sure that they're on the street for two months. 
We, we aim for 60 days. Sometimes they're even longer. Um, but if you could, you know, one of the things you can do is to make sure that you have that time to totally fill out the application and work on that. The, the other part I just want to really highlight is the application review information. And that information is what the reviewers are going to actually rank all of the applications against. It's transparent. It's not meant to be uh, hidden in any way. But it's those looking at that and seeing the need is, you know, might be 25 percent. If that is, make sure you write a really strong need statement. If it's looking at what the solution you're proposing is, make sure you have a really strong statement there. Whatever they are, but you can see what the criteria are and what's going to be ranked and how it's going to be viewed. And all of our applications are ranked usually about on, on a scale of 1 to 100. Um, they'll get, whenever you, if you submit an application, it'll go through a process of one to make sure that it's complete and, and that you're an eligible organization. And then usually we send them to objective review where we hire subject matter experts from around the country to review all our applications and to make recommendations to us. And one of the things I, I do recommend for everybody is if you haven't um, been a part of a federal review before, you can definitely become a reviewer at HRSA and, we're, and learn about how that whole process works. So uh, we can move on to the next slide. Uh, the application package in general and the attachments, that's one of the things that we just want to make sure when you, when you have your application that you go through and you make sure that it is detailed. Um, that it answers everything that has been asked of you. If you, anyone's not familiar with, every, every organization that receives money from the federal, go federal government has to uh, be, be uh, registered at the System for Award Management website, or SAM.gov. And your registration has to be updated annually. So that's one of the things just to make sure you have. You don't have to wait until you want to apply for a NOFO. You can just go and register right now. The other part is all of our applications come through grants.gov. And when you come through grants.gov, again, you have to be registered there. So you need to make sure that those are up to date and up to speed. So when you come down to the deadline and you're trying to submit that day, you find out you're at your um, registration has lapsed, then it's going to be a whole other process of trying to, to get through everything at once. So you can go do those today without even uh, knowing what you want to apply for yet, but just getting yourself ready. Um, the other part is making sure and on all of our applications there are attachments, there are forms. If you have any of those, to make sure that, that you go through and that there, you get everything done and that you address all the required criteria. That if the criteria are listed there, if there are five criteria, that you make sure you address all of them. Even if you're like, well, I can do three of them, then you need to figure out a way to do the other two. Maybe it's partnering with somebody else. Maybe it's going in with somebody else on their application. But figuring out a way to make all of, meet all the criteria so that it is a complete application in that. Next slide, please. So one of the things in this, we just put together kind of the top 10 list of, of things just to keep in mind when you're, when you're applying for funding. Um, one is just in terms of the NOFO release. Again, we, we try and aim for having 60 days of a NOFO on the street whenever we, we post one. That if you, you can register at grants.gov or on our website, um, and it will be pinged every time we upload a NOFO. So you can go there and take a look, see if you're eligible, see if it's something that that you're interested in, that you have an expertise in, and, and get back to that. Um, again, once you start, as, as Amanda said, you start, you want to be, you want to give yourself as much time as possible. I mean, applications are not easy. We're, we're working on, on trying to streamline them a little more um, on our NOFOs, but they are things that you need, to, you need to put an effort into. And we don't want you, one, to waste time on things you're not eligible for, and two, to, to focus on things that you get it, you, you find out about it a week before the deadline, and then trying to cram it all in in one week is not really going to work. So the other parts are just making sure you follow all the instructions um, and that everything is in order in terms of going through it. And that's when also having a team that if you read through the NOFO yourself and you're like, this, this looks like we could really get funding for this, we are in line, we are eligible, have somebody else read through it too. It's always good to have a couple people look at it and say, does this meet our needs? Do we actually, are we eligible for this? Does it make sense? And then you want to finish your, your application, writing it and getting it together, you know, not like an hour before the deadline, but days before the deadline. So that again, you can give it to somebody else to look at, to read through and say, you hit all the things you needed to, or you're missing a letter. And if it's an hour before the deadline, you're not going to get the letter. If it's three days before the deadline, you have a much better chance of, we have to have a letter from the state, or we have to have an MOU from our, our partner, 
whatever it is, it gives you that time to make sure you get all those corrections in place. Um, the other is keep, just keeping the audience in mind. We hire, again, we have most of our applications come through objective review. And that's the subject matter experts that are there, but they're not necessarily going to know your community, the needs of your community, the specific issues that you're trying to address, or the, the, what you're doing and how that is important. So they're going to need to have that information in those applications. Um, and the last part, I mean, the other parts are just making sure you're clear and precise in what you write, you present. And when, you, when you're telling it of your application, it's telling a story. It's starting from beginning to end. It needs to be able someone to follow it, reading it, saying, oh, this is what you see, this is why you're doing what you're doing, and this is the outcome you think you're going to get. And being able to tell that story in a way that someone can read it and make sense of it. Um, it also, it's just making sure that you present that you have, you have the fiscal capability to handle and manage federal funds. Because the public funds that come out, we want to make sure that people are, are not going to be either at a loss or that they end up saying, oh, we couldn't handle it, here's the money back. We don't want it back. We would like the actual service to be done. Um, the other part is just making sure you attend to all the technical details and trying to do those ahead of time. I, again, when you can go look at a NOFO in the past, from the past years that's come, that's come out, find one that it actually met your need, you know, you would like to apply to, read through it, and you can start writing your application against that NOFO. You can pre start preparing it, even though the NOFO was written for three years ago, you can start an application preparing for that, anticipating that the, it might be re-released in, in this year. And you can look ahead, and I'll show you on grants.gov where you can see what's coming up this year. Um, the other parts are just kind of, one, making sure that if you, with the attachments, um, if you have every ap application we have has attachments included, make sure you label them, make sure you, you do it. If they ask for one in, in attachment one and attachment two, don't combine them. <laughs> Give them what they ask for in the order they ask for. It just makes it that much um, more of an, a chance that you're going to get a better score and that people will understand exactly what you're, you're presenting there. Um, in terms of just reading through things, it's also, we, all of our applications, or most of our applications, have page limits. And to be aware of that as well. That's one of the things that people, sometimes they'll be like, oh, we're just going to put our annual report in there too, and that puts you over the page limit. And if it does, what we end up doing is we cut it off at the page limit and we might not review half your application. So don't put in excessive things. Make sure that they, are, they speak exactly what you need and that they're consistent, that if you have a table in there, if you have attachments, they're, they're, they're not saying, we're looking at two years here, we're looking at five years over here, we're looking at five years ago back there. Make them consistent and figure out how do you make sure that the data is all speaking in one, one time frame and at the same time for everybody. And then the last thing is just you submit all of the things at the same time. If you submit an application, you cannot go in and alter it or make additions to it. That stands as an application, and then if you, in some cases, it might be that that's the only one you can submit. If you, you wait to get everything put together um, and, and go over it, and again, have somebody else review it to make sure you've addressed all the things that are needed there, all the requirements are met. I can go to the next slide. Um, just a, this is just to let you know, on HERS's website, uh, the, that's where we have, one, all of our programs are listed on the maternal and child health, are listed there that we fund, also on all of our other programs that we fund. Um, so you can look through it and see if they make, you know, if there's a bureau other than maternal and child health that you might also be interested in, or just to find out what everything that they've got on. The other part is we go, we talk about applying for federal funding. Everything you'll need to go through and look at, um, to think about, okay, these are things that I, you know, I can start setting up now or getting together. We also have our application instructions, and that's one of those things that just says, here's how the application process works. It accompanies every NOFO that we put out. In the application process, they're listed on our website now. You can go there, you can download it, you can look through it. You can start putting things together to make sure that everything is, is there and make, when you get to the actual NOFO, when it comes out, you've got half the application already put together. These are just things that you can have from our website as well. The other part is you can apply to become a reviewer. And as I mentioned, we'll, uh, becoming a reviewer is a, is a chance to kind of get behind the scenes of the process and get a much better understanding of how all of those, those things will work. I can go to the next slide. Um, so on grants.gov's website, that's the two places. The main place where we post every NOFO is posted for 26 federal agencies, 
You can go on that site, you can search the site. In particular, you can go down um, and search on, if you want to search by agency, you can go to HHS, you can go down to HRSA, all of the NOFOs that we have listed on that site. It also has the status of the NOFO. And there's a forecasted status, which says what we are anticipating, and we will put out saying we are anticipating awards being, or putting out a NOFO for, on this particular area. When you get to that site, you can then, you can look through it and say like, okay, that's coming this year. If you want, that's when you can also go back and you can see what is open as well. If there are particular ones that are open and what's there. The other is that you can look back on what's archived or closed. And you can look back at the old NOFOs. And if they're, you know, you see one that's coming up this year, go back. Most of our NOFOs are for three years. Go back years and see if you can find that NOFO from HRSA. And you can look at that one and get an idea of what we asked for. It might change in this coming year. But you could start writing your application against that old NOFO to take away a lot of that work ahead of time. Whether it's, you know, then, then it's just tweaking it to make it fit to the new one. The other part you can do on this is save, you can save your search. So in this, this particular slide, I just ran it on MCHB, and it pulled up all of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau from HRSA is listed on this, uh, uh, the NOFOs that were on this slide. That if you, you like that search, you can do save that search, and you can sign up in grants.gov, and it will ping you anytime that search changes, meaning anytime we uploaded a NOFO that was from MCHB. So you can find out and have 60 days to work on it rather than you happen along and found out now you have 15 days left until the due date. So that's one of the things you can just sign up for again and as, as things get put up there, it'll let you know, it'll just say there's, an, there's a new NOFO that has been posted, you can go there, look, it's for higher ed institutions, I'm not a higher, inst higher ed institution, it's not for me, fine. But you'll be able to see when the next community-based organization or nonprofit NOFO was posted and be able to get that information right when it start, comes out. Um, we'll go to the next slide. And the other part then is just looking at um, the resources and support that are available. This is also on HRSA's website. All of these, these links here are on it, but you can find it on HRSA's website. The application guide I just talked about, which tells you all the information about a NOFO that comes with it and how the application process will work. It also goes to some of the technical assistance. We have a website off of our webpage. Um, off of our website, we have a webpage. Um, which also has videos and um, podcasts, as well as more information about what you need in terms of creating, or applying to HRSA funding, um, as well as all these things from grants.gov. There's a wealth of information on grants.gov's website, all about the federal review process, all about the application process, um, as well as just giving you background on how all those things work. So you can just, just mining that site and reading through things. Again, before you, before you, you have a NOFA that you want to apply to, Doing that research and getting that information will definitely give you that leg up. Um, on HRSA's website, there's again things from applying for, for grants um, to application writing, other, other tips and tricks that we have up there just to give you, give you some resources. And the other part is just, let me go to the next slide, is on HRSA's website, becoming a, a grant reviewer. So as I said, all of our, most, or almost all of our awards are to go through the Objective Review Committee which means we hire outside experts to come in and be reviewers. They're all compensated, but they, come, they are reviewers. They will be, they have that subject matter expertise. All of you, if you're involved in healthcare in any way, um, could definitely be, be reviewers for it. You can go to our website, you can sign up to become a reviewer and get into our database. That's where we, we then run our database to figure out who's got these expertise, whatever NOFA we're reviewing, and then we, we invite those people to be part of the review. When you do that, you can, you can review applications, you can get a better understanding of what a successful application looks like, what are some of the issues that people come up against, what things you might want to look at in terms of how, what do people, what do reviewers look at, what are they trying to get, get to, or how do they rate things, um, as well as meeting people from across the country who, are, who have the same interests as you. So those are all things that we, we definitely recommend, particularly if you've never been in a federal review before, if you never submitted an application to apply to become a reviewer, because you get that opportunity to kind of be behind the scenes um, and, and get an understanding of how that whole process works. And with that, I guess we'll open it up.
Thank you so much, Amanda and James. At this time, we will open it up to questions um, to conclude the panel discussion, which ends at four. Um, so if anyone has any questions in the audience, now would be a great time to raise your hand and let us know. Okay, we've got one over here. Good morning. Well, good afternoon. Gosh, it's four o'clock. Um, my name is Alyssa Keefe. I'm with Common Spirit Health. First and foremost, thank you for the dedicated team at HRSA for your patience, your technical assistance. Um, it does take a lot to respond, um, and you guys are always willing to lend a hand, and we are very appreciative of that. One of the things that I am often challenged with internally is that we're scanning grants.gov, we're scanning um, everything, but the timelines are really short. Um, and so one of the things I wondered about, and this might be a relatively um, novice question, but is there kind of like a calendar of when to expect? So where would someone find that so that you can start to plan when you have small finite, finite teams um, and minimal resources, when you know certain things are gonna happen? Now granted, we wanna be planning well in advance, but I'm looking for the master calendar for things that have been appropriated in an award so that we can kind of think upstream and be ready for that 30 or 60 day response. So I, I, I don't know if I missed it, but maybe you could just point us in that direction. So part of that is, as Amanda said on, on the website, on HRSA's website, you can sign up for the newsletter they have and that will forecast what's coming out and, and you know, within a two week period of what, what they're expecting. Um, on grants.gov, you can, when you do the search, you can search on forecasted. Um, and forecasted, we will, we will plan, we will post on the grants.gov saying, here are the application, here are the NOFOs we're anticipating this year. Um, and we'll, we'll usually upload those in the next uh, month or two. Um, and saying, here's the ones we anticipate. Uh, whenever we get our appropriation, usually there's, that means there's another request or something, a directive in there that we have to do. But that'll give you an idea of what is coming during the year. Um, as, well, as well as one of the things, that's when I, you know, I suggest we, you can sign up in grants.gov that as soon as, um, you know, for it and do a save, you know, like an MCHB save, it'll ping you as soon as it's uploaded. So you'll get an email saying something has just changed in your, in your search and you can go and look and take a look at it then. Um, and the other part is just to start to, if you know, if you see in the forecast what's coming, you can go back to go back and try and find that NOFO from the past um, to be able to say this is what was asked three years ago and start writing your application against that. And then you just have to tweak it. And I think all that, thank you. I think that's a great question. And all that I would add is, um, I'm excited to share that for the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, um, our grants forecast for fiscal year 2024, now we don't have appropriations yet, but in, as, a, as a contingency plan, we've actually just, um, in the last couple weeks, forecasted our expected grant opportunities for fiscal year 2024. So those are up on grants.gov. And then also just wanted to share, um, we are working really hard to increase our application windows from an average of 60 days to closer to 90 days to really give time for folks to put together wonderful um, applications that we know um, you all wanna write in order to um, carry out wonderful plans. So um, we don't always get to that 90 days, but just wanted you to know that that's an internal goal for us and we do it whenever we can. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, if people have more specific questions on some of the programs that have been posted and discussed today, where should they go? So um, there's a few places you can go. Well, number one, um, James and I are available to talk afterwards. If anyone would like to talk about any specific programs, we're happy to talk with you. Um, in NOFO op, um, um, postings and notices of funding opportunity, there's always gonna be the name of two agency contacts. And for any specific program, that's the person you can reach out to to ask questions, to get more information. And please do be sure, as James mentioned, to tune in to the technical assistance webinar. It's an opportunity to ask questions and hear others' questions um, that we hope would be helpful to you as you're writing your application too.